Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to the Sweetwater Minute. Big news today, Cubase 9.5 has been announced by Steinberg, and we've got Steinberg's Greg Ondo here to give us a tour of the new features in the software. Now, nobody knows Cubase like Greg does. I think you're going to find this a fascinating video. Check it out. Cubase Pro 9.5 offers many enhancements, including numerous feature requests from our user base. Let's take a look at some of the new functionality. In our right-hand zone, there's some added functionality in the media where we have direct access to your file browser. So here we could go directly to your computer's hard disk to look for project files, to look for different uh, drum loops, samples, as well as plug-in presets. The control room is also now docked on the right-hand side, so we can have an independent monitoring volume from the gain structure uh, of the master fader. We can have dimming. We could also switch between different monitor speakers connected to your audio interface, as well as down mix presets, and the ability to have four independent cue mixes. Metering is also incorporated on the right-hand side. So we can see full digital scale, DIN, all the way through different metering types, including CAT system 20, 14, and 12. And clicking on the loudness tab at the bottom will now switch you to your loudness units or LUFs or R128 metering. So ideal for if you're working with broadcast. A new grid mode is offered called Adapt to Zoom. So depending upon your zoom level, it will snap based on that. So at this zoom level, we have it snap to the bar. If we zoom in, we can have it snap to the beat. Zooming in further, we can snap down to the 16th note, 32nd note, etc. So very easy for snapping without having to constantly switch between different values. Automation was a big theme in this update. So we come here, let's look at our automation. To add just a quick little automation bump, we could now just select a range tool and just drop it in like so. If we wanted to tilt our automation bump, we could do that and grab the corner here and just tilt it up. Now, when I hover over different automation points, we can see a little diamond at the top. And if there's a curve, we could see this little dot directly on the curve here. So if I wanted to just bring this up or down, I could do that like so. But let's say if I have a big curve, what I want to do in a longstanding feature request is if we go directly on the middle dot, at this point we can do your Bezier curves, just like that. So very easy to implement, very easy to have done. So again, a long-standing feature request is beautifully implemented. Our customers have asked for more than eight inserts, so we give now up to 16 insert slots. And you have numerous options for if you want it to be pre or post. So we see this green line and we could actually move this green line to indicate which are pre fader and which are post fader. So it's completely user configurable. We've also incorporated and enhanced some of the existing plugins. So we can have our a GUI overhaul for the Magneto tape saturation plugin. The tube compressor has been updated with a great function called a character. And this has been highly regarded by many of the mastering engineers that have been using it in WaveLab 9.5. And plus you have side chaining capability. The vintage compressor now has a new mix parameter. So if you wanted to set up parallel processing scenarios very easily, we could do that. And the standard compressor has a high ratio mode. So some nice enhancements to the existing plugins, and again, the ability to have 16 different plugins uh, with user definable pre and post faders. To do offline processing, this has also been enhanced as well. So if I wanted to select four different events, we could now go to your audio menu to direct offline processing. So if I wanted to run these through, let's say I wanted to adjust the gain, you can see that as I make an adjustment here, that the files will just be updated. And this is really handy if you have kind of an older computer. Let's say if you wanted to just come over here and I wanted to run a delay on all those, or if I wanted to 
come over here and for these voices, I just wanted to apply a de-esser. And while this seems destructive, like many programs, at any time, we could come over here and just choose to remove that one function from all the programs, or I could choose to just select, delete all the processes and have very effective offline processing. There's been some enhancements with our sampler track, which was a big hit with version nine. So if I have a virtual instrument that's going out to, uh, you know, that has MIDI information in it, I could just drag that MIDI file directly into the sampler part. And now that will create the sampler track for me just based directly from the MIDI information. Now, speaking of virtual instruments, one of the great things is the addition of a wavetable synthesizer called Flux. And this runs directly within Halion, but you could, again, have different modulation sources, mod, you know, arpeggio. So uh, a full-featured wavetable synthesis that's included with the 9.5. One of the areas that we wanted to have some updates was to the click track and cubase has been you know had the same click track for many years so if we wanted to come here we could see okay we're gonna have our click track but let's say if we go to our signature track we can now actually edit the click pattern so maybe you don't want it uh to have a note on the two or if you wanted to have different pitches for different notes Let's say, and we could have different patterns that we could store. So if I wanna to go to my default pattern, but let's say I wanna do quintuplets or septuplets, or I wanted to have double time. And again, I could just say, let's just come here, let's double the tempo. Or let's say I want that as a pattern. Now there's some, and you notice that the grid will change based on this. So if I actually just wanted to come here into my signature track, and let's say I wanted to make this 12, eight, we can now see our grid aligned to 12, eight. And if I wanted to have different pulses for my grid, again, I could just go to my click pattern editor, and let's say I wanted six uh, and then like that so we could actually define the pulse of the grid based on your metronome sounds now if we wanted to have different metronome sounds you can now very easily come here click on the metronome setup and you could switch between numerous different sounds so when you come here you could have clave cowbell if you're looking for like a yuri click sound you could just go to your vintage spike and also you could have go to click patterns. So you could create your own patterns, but if you wanna have patterns in six, eight, 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 you can modify. So you can have different patterns for different tempos. But one of the best things is I could render this as a MIDI click between the locators. I'm just gonna select all my events here or very easily just render it as an audio click. So at this point, we could just have our audio metronome and our click track rendered. Some of the other functions have been renamed to be a little more obvious. And one of the things, if we go to our studio setup that you can find, if you go to the audio system, is the inclusion of a double precision engine. So when we go to your VST audio system, we can now have it as the highly regarded Steinberg engine at 32-bit floating point, but now it's gonna be a double precision. So we can have it as 64-bit floating point. So as you can see, many new features that could really enhance your working experience with Cubase found in the new 9.5 update. We're so excited about this new release of Cubase version 9.5 with all the new features and all the new workflow enhancements, really incredible software that will have you making music in no time. And our thanks to Greg Ondo for providing the video, nobody knows Cubase like Greg does. Thanks for joining me for the Sweetwater Minute, I'm Mitch Gallagher.